It's Jim Sterling. James Stephanie Sterling. Despite the fact they're still called Jim Sterling, made a very hilarious video yesterday called The Woke Chin. The latest silly outrage. Pronouns have occurred. Again. <gasps> Oh, that, oh, that's vile. Mm. Megatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. Works for me. Oh, you keep heaving those boozies, Miss Sydney Sweeney, until I watch your next movie. beautiful pair of knockers it's an interesting video i sat down this morning and i watched it and by the way ladies and gentlemen i have another video coming out later on today not sure what time that will be because i'm in the uk and that's reflecting news from a few days ago but it's still relevant for the usual content i like to cover here so jim sterling if you don't know who he is and i specifically genderize him right there because these days they have questionable augmentations but they still call themselves Jim Sterling and yes I just refer to him as them so sorry Jim but you're actually a he not a she no matter how much your mental illness is telling you otherwise I used to be a big fan of Jim back in the days of Destructoid he was just <laughs> this very volcanic person with the black overcoat and the red sunglasses talking about his frustrations with video gaming, and we looked at him as someone who was a spokesperson. But then of course, as his channel progressed and he ended up having this very strange paraphernalia about his channel, where he would stand on a podium which had connotations of a certain Third Reich party back in the day. Um, obviously, I'm not saying that Jim is that kind of person. Definitely not. He's a very left-leaning, outspoken man on the platform but also Jim Sterling sees themselves as a amateur wrestler with laughable results it has to be said and if you if you ever watch his videos you'll know exactly what I'm talking about but when I watched this video today I thought it was very interesting because uh, a lot of people who had dismissed his video as being, well he takes a lot of time before he gets to the main point actually if you do watch the video he does go for the jugular right away. And I will say a lot of the points that Jim brings up, it's from his point of view, he just wants clickbait. He wants, to, he's late to the argument or he's an absolute denier of what's going on in video games. Now you might have noticed I've been taking a bit of time to get to my point of this video as well, but hopefully my headline will inform you why I've got to give this video a bit of a preamble. And I will say that the whole debate about video game women looking very unattractive in the West with elongated chins, it's all a myth. It's not real. You're imagining things, Jace. Just get on with your day-to-day -day life and forget that it actually is happening. But the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. It is a real thing. I've covered it in my videos since the beginning of January. I've noticed the degeneration of female video games or the actual characters in the games for quite a while. Why is she? What is she looking at? She's like looking off to the side. What does she keep looking? What's over here? Like she keeps looking at her dad. There. Okay. Nope. She looked at her dad for a second. <laughs> But like most people who sit on the other side of the fence, 
you do wonder if you should say something about it because what you're worried about is clapback from people who say, how dare you say that? Um, again, the whole incel in air quotes comes up, which I absolutely hate. Uh, am I an incel? Well, I could be. I'm just the wrong shade of white to be considered one, but I, I guess I could be. I mean, I sit at home and I, in between my production, I look at hot women in bikinis and swimsuits and everything else. But I guess I appreciate women as a straight man. I mean, oh dear God, if I were to project that outside, what will I be then called? Many other names, I assume. So what's good for, what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander, right? Or in this case, the gandering goose who likes to gander online. But I have to say this much. For you, Jim, to call men incels because we don't like the way females are portrayed in entertainment these days and it's laughably bad because Jim even uses a quick moment from the acolyte to illustrate the point that Marvel films have become woke now that uh, your entertainment Star Wars is now the same way which it is it absolutely is. I don't understand why Jim lives in this mental bubble of denial. Now, Jim likes to pride himself in being six foot four, and that by the time they come up to you, you're astonished they're a woman. But the problem is, Jim, even the best satellite from NASA or the cheapest, millions of miles up, or sorry, thousands of miles up above the Earth, right, can spot you straight away that you're not a woman. Okay, and that's NASA technology. So I'm sorry, Jim, that you're you're flexing that, hey, I'm such a convincing man woman. And by the way, why do you call yourself a trans femme? If you're transgendering from one gender to another, it's you're a tr you're not a trans femme. You've you've transgendered from a, a biological male uh, to a non-biological female. So uh, are you ashamed to be known as transgender, Jim? I don't know. It's very bizarre. But again, this whole attack on people like me who don't like the looks of females in Western video gaming now is absolutely laughable. Apparently, we're branded perverts because. We like to look at something very pleasing. Apparently, we like to jerk off to video game females. Uh, absolutely not. Do I take my tape measure out and measure the size of a woman's chin? No. It's laughable when you see Digital Foundry with John Linneman or John Linehan. Is it John Linehan? I can never remember. It's John Linehan uh, on the on his thumbnail where he's standing proudly next to the new version of Joanna Dark who's got the biggest chin since Bruce Forsyth. Good day, my loves. And, and I'm thinking to myself now, I think the Digital Foundry boys probably know it's a terrible design, but they're like, hey, you know what? We're in on the joke and we're just going to go along because we need the uh, clicks to our channel and our video. So, because again, if you saw the whole, the fallout from Stellar Blade with, <laughs> with the Digital Foundry boys and Alex Battaglia. Um, and again, Richie Ledbetter seems to like the character design of Eve from that game and was kind of saying it in a very subtle way. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, well look, um, Alex, you were talking about Forspoken. Again, <laughs> it was a game that was shown quite early on in yes. the showcase. I don't really quite know what to make of it. Uh, but why don't you tell us what you think about mm -hmm. it? I think it's Commander Jim Stephanie Sterling, a trans femme, she, them, poly antagonist, princess, critic, pro wrestler, the reigning and commanding PCW UK Women's Champion for 465 days and counting. So you're a biological dude who's now a woman who's fighting in women's wrestling. Yay! Oh, Dylan Mulvaney, are you available? Cooey! But when you do see websites like Women in Games and Charlotte Tilbury celebrates a year in gaming, and she's the corporate ambassador. And that's the thing to note, folks. It's all about the corporatization of video games. Back in the 90s, when video games were starting to become a big thing, they weren't run by corporate entities, were they? It was just nerds making video games for, for nerds. Now it's all about curated mouthpieces because, hey, that's 2024 for you folks. 
Again, not saying women can't be part of video gaming, but it has primarily been a male dominated and much loved pastime. So women in gaming, live streaming five days a week, Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Twitch channel features giveaways, competitions, unboxings, updates such as new product reveals. Get ready with me and game where hosts create their favorite Charlotte Tilbury Beauty looks and play the latest games. Except what latest games are these girls actually playing? And you get the cringe-tastic poster with Charlotte, the redhead, uh, putting her hands in a sort of a mock praying position on, on top of a girl of diversity's head. So read into that as you will. And it's a bit more cringy when you say that. Also, what was more cringe-tastic about Jim's video is that he's in denial that DEI and ESG and infiltration groups like Sweet Baby Inc. are not really the problem. They're just there. And I'm thinking, but Jim, you know they're there to try to destroy video games, to rework them, to rewoke them. So, Jim, when I watch this video, the guy is in absolute denial. He's, he's the typical person on that side of the fence who wants to come forward and say, hey, listen, you know, what you're talking about, incels, all the men, all the straight, non-white men who want to see an attractive video game female in their favorite franchise or a brand new franchise, you're all toxic, you're all incelic. Yeah, that's a new word I'm going to make up now for this video today. So apparently the bigger the chin of females in the West video gaming is concerned, the more vociferous the very left of that side of the fence is getting. Apparently they're more popular in terms of their opinion than us guys right here. And listen, let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, the very based women out there who like to see sexy women in games. Yes, they might draw the line at overtly sexy women, of course, but again, to me, when I see someone like Eve from Stella Blade and the various outfits you can trade off with her and again jim sterling used that as a point in his video to illustrate the fact that this kind of game design is very perverted towards the male mindset jim when i picked up a copy of dazzler comics from marvel in the 1980s did i feel an urge to unzip my trousers and whack one off for old lang syne no i like the character of allison she's hot and that's as far as my admiration goes. She's hot. I don't go further beyond the field because if you do, then I will say to you, real man in the world, go out and maybe touch some grass or try to interact with a woman. Or if that's too awkward for you, just do the safe thing online and maybe go to Sports Illustrated, a cheerleader website. What I do actually find encouraging, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's only a few clicks on your keyboard, but you can find even on Pinterest, who are promoting this heavily, by the way, AI biological female generated images of beautiful women who are meant to look how they're supposed to, because it's the frustration now, isn't it? That if you can't find a certain um, image of a celebrity or a specific pose of a woman that you want, and I'm talking like not explicit poses, just like the general thing of say a woman who's uh, lying down on the side and she's smiling, but she's giving you a bit of a cheeky smile. You need AI to find that for you now. Rather than going to Fiverr, where it will cost you a lot of money, go to AI, it's free, and you can get high-res images and use it as you please. Jim Sterling also brought up this point in his video, which I will link in my channel so you can go and watch it, that uh, apparently the, the whole reason why this is big strong movement to make women more androgynous in your favorite video games is because it needs to appeal to more transgender people. Uh, it's a bit of a strange conspiracy theory, but I do go along with it because at the end of the day, what are we trying to say? It's basically, well, we can't have attractive video games in, in the West anymore where women are meant to be beautiful. We have to make them the complete opposite. It's to stop toxicity towards women. Is it really? Because I think you're doing the exact opposite by uh, denying the fact that women do have smaller chins. I mean, case in point, if you can see that right there, that is Sydney Savage from Danger Girl. And when I had this tattooed in America in 2009, what did a female tattoo artist do? She gave her a small chin. Not elongated, like 
Desperate Dan. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful design. That'll be with me till I, I die. Not going to get her removed. And uh, yeah, small chin wonder, right? But apparently women can't have any ounce of femininity in a video game these days or in your comic book or in the film. Good God, man. It's just, yeah. And I do think there is a, a movement towards just making them very unappealing in, in Western entertainment in general. Of course, there's a more sinister movement now that uh, there has to be more than one gender, despite biologically speaking, there's only two. So again, video gaming has to take some kind of responsibility for trying to social engineer future players and generations that yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, you need to embrace the idea that is actually more than one gender out there, which I think government should really take take action against but they won't because they're too just busy at the moment trying to make each other the bad guy or the bad girl when it comes to politics and I still think America has way 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 more sexy politics than the British do so the whole myth about oh there's no such thing as the modernization of western video gaming is completely misguided because again people like Jim who I will once again say I used to be a big fan of back in the day but sadly now, Jim has regressed to this entity that, again, during lockdown, his figures, his subscribers were dropping like flies because they couldn't accept his change as a trans femme. Again, what the hell is that, Jim? <laughs> so just very quickly, folks, I thought I would switch screens and show you this trailer for Norse. It's an official announcement, and what's very interesting about this is a Viking tactics game, and uh, what the developers have said, uh, who are obviously Arctic Hazard, that it's going to be an authentically representative <laughs> Viking game. In other words, who were in the Vikings back in the day, right? No diverse wanderers, unless for some reason they did wander off the beaten track. They took the wrong turn at Albuquerque and somehow ended up with the Vikings. But have a look at this. I haven't seen this trailer before, so it's my first time seeing it. Norway, 802 AD. A land ruled by petty kings and yars. Oh, very nice looking female in the background. Craftspeople, farmers, seafarers. Merchants and warriors band together in settlements for protection and company. They honor gods of fertility and courage. Thunder nice animations. War. Get back! Sons! Horse! Oh, this looks actually quite good. Life is hard on this mountainous strip of land facing the grey storm-tossed whales road. What kind of asshole place is this? <laughs> Outlaws haunt wow. these shrouded forests. Raiders prowl the coast like wolves of the sea. Men kill for silver and revenge, for honor and reputation. It is a time when legends are forged. Oh, I like that face. A bit like Kurt Russell. Have gone before. Look down from the mead benches mm. of Odin Allfather. This is the dawn of the Viking Age. This is Norse. Holy shit. Wow. And isn't it funny? Look at that, look at that thumbnail. God of War, Ragnarok's Norse mythology. Accuracy is better than most. Well, in terms of their depiction of Thor right here, yes, that's absolutely true. But then why oh why Santa Monica Studios did you take Agraboda and make a diverse. Why? So when Jim Sterling says, oh, there's no such things as the wokeifying of video games, it's all your imagination, to quote, <laughs> to quote Belui Sum, then he's absolutely talking out of his asshole. But honestly, that was the first time I watched that trailer for Norse and it looks fantastic. Some of the animations look really, really good. And Arctic Hazard, They've probably done this in retaliation to the fact that, hey, you know, we're not we're seeing a misrepresentation of our culture here. We need to course correct this. And you might think as well, when companies come out and start doing the course correction, it could be perceived as being cringe, perhaps. But, you know, that's the reason why we now get Japan 
to a degree, uh, South Korea and China with their alternative entertainment, which gets attacked by the West because the West wants those countries to align with their ideologies. And thankfully so far, places like South Korea and Japan have been quite resistant to this nonsense. They don't want it. They just want good old-fashioned entertainment. And, and again, what I thought was very funny, when I was in Japan in 2018, I remember going into a toy store and uh, this little kid was looking at some really sexy anime waifu dolls and his mom was like, oh, don't look at them. Do Go away. Come come out. Come out. I thought that was quite hysterical because the kid was obviously like, hey, man, I, I like this. What What's this? And eventually when that kid gets older, they're going to be able to go to that same store and purchase that statue that their mum forbade them to look at. So, Norse, uh, it was only thanks to uh, the coverage I saw last night that I had to give a look at this, and it's it's good, it's great, it looks great. I hope it's um I hope it's not an online experience and that you can just play it offline. Um, I understand it's a tactics game, but yeah, I was quite pleasantly surprised by this. Again, look at the way they've stylized that N, pretty awesome. But on that one, ladies and gentlemen, as I switch screens, not so subtly. What did you think of my, um... <laughs> Oops, oh my God. That's what I want to uh, retrieve. I don't want to get that crushed. This has been with me since the 1990s, so... Well, that was embarrassing. Didn't mean to knock you over. Odeon First Choice Cinema. And I'm gonna end this video by saying this, folks. And you might not even agree with me with what I'm about to say. You might find this a bit, oh, it's touching a raw nerve. Uh, but I do see certain celebrities, I'll say Joshua Jackson for one, who's married to the god-awful Jodie Turner-Smith and other less prominent presenters on YouTube, and, and they're white, by the way, so I have to mention this, um, who have now opted for a, a diverse partner because it probably scores them brownie points in, in the wider spectrum of entertainment. Like, if you do this, it's going to be good for you in the future. So what I'm actually saying is, folks, is that first of all, there's plenty of white women for me to interact with if I so desire to. And believe me, I would actually like to do that at some point. But of course, if the lovely white ladies don't want to interact with a toxic brown man like me, there's always Japan, there's always South Korean women for me to have a, have a wander with if you get my drift because I do actually like Japanese women. I think they're really gorgeous. I've met a couple up close and personal. And since I got my friend Johnny Masako who lives in Japan, when I go and visit him at some point, I'm sure he will set me up with a date or two, you naughty man Johnny. Just make sure they're biological women, okay? I had a lot off my chest today, unlike Jim Sterling, who seems to have the strangest chest I've ever seen. Apparently a chest that he allows to be touched by the consenting party and concerned. I'm assuming they're being paid for their time and privileges but on that one ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed my video today leave a like below smash that subscribe button and if i were you and if you were me you should come back for the next video <laughs>